The mega logai of Yahweh El Elyon Elohim is always alarm and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the giants and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness, or training in righteousness that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, or very accurately handling this very great, unique, infallible, and inerrant great word of truth. Glory be to my Yahweh Siddhkanu, to the highest, and peace be to be the mankind on this earth, to those who believe in my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, by faith alone, in Christ alone. And great goodness and goodwill to them who love to walk by becoming the technon believers of this great Lord our God, who have been called into the adoption of His sons, and who have been realized the great reality of the truth which says, in 1 John 5.20 or 1 John 5.20 to say that we know and we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding that we may know Him that He is true and we are in Him that He is true and that is His Son Jesus Christ our Lord who is the only true Lord of a God and eternal life. To those who believe this statement and believe that we are not of the world because the world lieth in wickedness, and those who believe that we have been called as little children, as technon, the technon crowd are the people where they become the disciples of the Lord of a God day by day, who grow up from milk to bread, and you should understand the difference between the way drinking the milk, which is just to swallow it up. But when you come to the stage of eating the bread, you need to chew. And that's what, dear brethren, we can compare the filth of the translation for the first time, sliving the beer. Chewing in the sense, taking every word and looking upon it, what would have been the same word in the original Hebrew or Greek when you're reading the New Testament or Old Testament? Or what would have been in the Aramaic in comparison to the Old Testament, some part of the book of Daniel? And you would love to expound that in the Hebrew and Greek and Aramaic. That's chewing the bread. And you have to understand, if you want to chew the bread, you have to tear it down and cer certainly crush it under your teeth. That's what cracking it down. These are the people who have been called as technon, says one John. Apostle John writes this epistle purely for the technon crowd. The crowd where they are growing up daily in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. The crowd who have truly understood the importance that they are been believing upon such true Lord of a God. And in such true Lord of a God, we have been said, the greatest words of all time we could understand. We know that the Son of a Lord of a God, the Father in heaven, has come. And that's Messiah where the Israelites are still waiting for him. But they do not know that through the operation of our right understanding in our mind, we can have this gnosis knowledge about this true one. And we are in that true one. Therefore, Galatians. 4, 4 teaches to us the importance of adoption of sons. From Galatians 3.26, he goes on to teach for us the work of the baptism of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in our life so that we are no longer tossed to and fro, but in return we have been called to put on Christ. Therefore, great peace and joy to them who love to walk breath by breath in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, cherishing and nurturing, and who can understand that we are no longer under the law, but we have been redeemed from the law and the people who haven't kept the law to be called as curse, and none could keep the law apart from a Christ. 
so that we might receive 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 which do, do which we don't have the caliber even to think of to earn for it it is only purely by the grace of the lord our god we can receive it we don't work we don't deserve Yet we have been called to receive, to become the sons of God. What a great privilege it will be. That we can cry with the same spirit, says Romans chapter 8, Abba Father. And do you know what is the meaning of that? As Christ our Lord of God exemplifies for us in John 17, 4. And concludes for us in verse number 9 to say, I pray for them because they are they which are thine are mine and which are mine are thine. And therefore he says that we should be taken into the place of adult son. If you don't grow up from huyas, you cannot become, the, if you don't grow from technon, you cannot become the huyas. That's what he says, the adult son. And the creation is waiting for the manifestation of those adult son. Therefore, dear brethren, we know that we are in him, says the scripture. And that's what we should be aware of all the time. We are in him, the true one. In the son of the true Lord and Savior, where he has been sent for us through Jesus Christ. And this one is the true Lord of our God and in him is only life eternal. Therefore, he says, neither is the name given for you to be saved in the heaven and the earth apart from this great name of the Lord of our God. Therefore, dear brethren, we know that whosoever is born of Lord of our God sinneth not, and he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, so that the wicked one cannot touch. Fulfilling John 14:30, where Christ our Lord of our God exemplified for us to learn the importance to say that this is the time when Satan would come and it will not find in me any fault. Therefore, dear brethren, keeping these things in our mind, whenever we love to come to approach this great, infallible and inerrant word of the Lord of our God, it is our duty to be constantly in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit. This great fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit, which demands for us to know that we shall not walk like the world. The world lieth in wickedness, but rather in return, the bold step of faith, like the way how Daniel took, like the way how in 1 Samuel 14, 6, Jonathan took, we shall be also over here to take the great bold step of faith, walking in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, breath by breath. The same thing what Jonathan took, the way how David took in 1 Samuel 17, 46 through 47. The same thing what Gideon took, the same thing what King Asa took, and the same thing what our Lord of our God trains us up when we move from milk to bread. And we don't stop at bread, that's just an intermediary stage. It is not the perfection stage, it is just the reasoning of silly things, wherewith, <coughs> as we have drunk, the sincere milk of the word of the Lord of our God being cleansed, and now we have put our foundation to slip the beer by cracking down in the filth of the translations what you go through, and there you have been established by kneeling down and reading for the first time, second time, third time, in all the mannerisms of the things of the versions what you have in your English. For example, you may start with good news, and then you go more, you may go for NIV, though you have some verses been erased there, and then you may start, and then you may come to put upon in the strong form foundation of KJV or NASB and then to you say my soul is not satisfied with this translation so I want to look what is truth then you go to eat strong meat and that's what dear brother and when Lamentations 310 has been recorded for us to teach that is going to send the beer and is going to keep lying in the secret places Slaving the beer is nothing but dear brother and that you know where you are going to get the great problem in your life the great problem begins in your life when you're not walking according to the rule of the word of the Lord of a God. That's why we find in the Old Testament a great example through the person called as Joshua, where he's been introduced to teach all the time the great lessons of our life, how this great word of the Lord of a God should be for us. So Joshua was a man who did not walk apart from the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. 
though they did not have the indwelling mentoring ministry yet they have been constantly abiding faithful to fear at his word to tremble at his word therefore we look from verse number five when he gives a great promise there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life so that i will not fail thee nor forsake thee so that it meant to say i will not neglect thee neither i will have in my mind to replenish thee as of therefore he says in verse number six be kazakh and be amat to be alert to be bold so that you can come to give for the work for which i have called that time it was the work for him to divide the inheritance of the lot today for us it is to witness the truth for which cause we have been born says john 18 38 so we should be bold kazakh we should be alert all the time our duty, our purpose, our meaning, our definition. You know what a great principle it is that many people who really don't understand to look. What is this Kazakh strength that has been given for us? What is the great mandate that we go through in the process of daily becoming the Lord's mind? Kazakh is daily growing up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, constantly being built up continually, yesterday, today, tomorrow, Proverbs 8, 34 through 36. For which cause of our Lord our God prayed for us? They have got thy word. Since they have got thy word through the remote declaration of the pastor teacher, they will keep thy word and they have kept thy word. The main problem with us in the present Christendom, dear brethren, many people are not aware what is this great infallible and inherent word of the Lord of our God, which should be for us the way when the great symbolism when Jeremiah takes in the chapter of the great piece of advice in the chapter of 28. When there are two people who are battling, the same thing what he says again for us. Do not trust in these lying words of these people. The way how Hananiah would come and say for them, then existed the false prophet. And the great symbolization wherewith Jeremiah wears upon his neck the yoke being made of wood. And Hananiah comes and tells, No, Lord has set you free. There is no any longer yoke of wood. And the day when the word of the Lord our God will be fulfilled through the mouth of Jeremiah, he says, This same year you shall die, Hananiah. Rather than wood, the people will be put with the yoke made of iron. The point what I want to tell dear brethren, if you don't carry your yoke of wood every day in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, that is nothing but carrying your cross and following him, the history which has been given for us so that you shall not become such failures you are totally ending up to be such great failures because you haven't taken to carry up your cross every day and follow my Lord yes that may be a burdensome for you that may be a troublesome for you but that's a great victory for you that's what he says in Hebrews 12 if the son endureth not the chastisement of the Lord of a God of his father particularly then is no way to be called as his son, but he is what? An illegitimate one. That's what the word says, but in the KJV it has been translated, it will be called as a bastard. But that we mean what? Today, if you don't come to learn Bible doctrine every day to know his pain and what it is to sit for one hour morning, one hour evening and graduate in the Lord's mind, then certainly you are not having to keep his word, neither you will be able to get his word, neither you will understand the way how you have to grow up Kazakh every day by taking up his cross. Therefore, he says, be strong, how we can be strong. If you don't have the word of the Lord of our God in you, you can never be strong. No matter how ever physically you may be strong, no matter how ever mentally you may be strong, but if you are not having spiritually the word of the Lord of God, you can never be strong. Because this is the only word that has been given for us in this earth to survive upon it, to build upon it. Therefore, with the word Kazakh. And as we are developing my Bible, the Bible which has been made by me and my father, the CS Study Bible, Kazakh Archeo, Study Bible. When Paul was being told, My grace is enough for thee, the word Archeo strength against any odds that could come. 
his mind which has been inculcated in the mind of apostle paul that's enough therefore he says imitate me in philippians 3 17 be you imitators of me as i imitate the one who has been leading me through christ and he says be noting of them they're walking after the mannerism of christ the rule that has been set for us that's the rule for us to be strong the rule that for us to take the yoke of wood but the way how these people are believing today false teachings by trusting lying words and forsaking the mercies of the lord of our god by absorbing vanities therefore the book of psalm is so great for us to learn and to understand dear brethren so that when his hands are pure, benignity of hands, when he can rise towards the Lord of our God, when his heart is pure, he can look the knowledge of Christ. And that's what we have been asking all the time, to use the privacy of your priesthood to rebound. Why these things are so much essential for us? Because, dear brethren, we have to be courageous. We have to grow up in the Kazakh Archeo strength. Without growing up and renovating your standards as per the Lord's mind, your life on this earth is mere waste. No matter however you may achieve the things pertaining to your life on this earth. That may seem great for you, that may seem best for you, that may seem absolutely brilliant for you. But in the sight of the Lord our God, you are just vain and vague. Doesn't the word say for us in the book of Ecclesiastes when the wisdom man says for us, everything is vanity under the sun. He thought he can build kingdoms. He thought he can make wives. He thought he can make houses. He thought he can make children. He thought he can make gold and silver. But nothing could cherish you in the way how you have to obey the word of the Lord of God. He says, better to be a living dog than a dead lion. All the details of life which you may have and you may think you are achieving great things. But at the end of the time, if you don't love to be following the Lord's mind faithfully, the way how the Syrophoenician woman get to, got into the healing of our daughter and giving for us a lesson that we, the church age believers as well, being Gentiles, even the dogs will eat the crumbs of the table, at least being a faithful dog, like a living faithful dog. Let's grow up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, breath by breath, pure to that. Let's wake up to put upon the yoke of wood upon our neck. In the time of Jeremiah chapter 28, the referring history for them that they will be taken into captivity for Babylon, looking upon the principle of it, because the word of the Lord of our God applies for every generation in its principle. We have to carry the yoke of wood every day upon our neck, upon our shoulders. Like the way how Simon the Syrian helped my Christ. We are here even to carry our cross to help ourselves. By defending the Lord's doctrine, by defending the Lord's mind, by defending the truth and making this great generation where our Lord our God has given in this church age, the Kainiketesis people, to realize their calling in Christ, to realize their great purpose in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, which is so much essential than their physical breath, than their physical lust, what they think they cannot survive without that. Dear brethren, before we could look how we have to be, the way how Joshua was been mandated, it demands for us to make our every breath in a complete dedication, in a complete obedience and commitment and love towards the Lord of our God, in a complete attitude to be free from our heart that should be of stony one and to be replaced it with the flesh one so that we can be eased of our comfort zone so that we could be removed out from the cherishing sin of us and so that we could be get free from our self-justification 
because dear brethren your self attitude will destroy you all the time the word of the lord of god demands for us the way how eve got destroyed you also should not follow in the same path the way how the israelites got destroyed but they have been given for us a great example to understand not to absorb the lying vanities any longer on this earth lying vanities are nothing but that which will not produce in you that fertility for the greater glory of the lord of god lying vanities will give you the way how you thought it is great pain to carry the yoke of wood then lying vanities at that moment they may say we shall be free from the yoke of wood but remember lord of a god is increasing upon you the yoke of iron why many people though they may think that this lord god of peace wherewith they should come and have this great true life of the spiritual one of the heavenly one yet why the christians are suffering because secretly they are yet not carrying their yoke of wood every day towards my christ and since they fail to carry the yoke of wood they involve in sin they involve in the terms of rationalism they involve in the terms of their empiricism they involve to forsake my lord of a god and if ever they would come they would love to be in the hypocritical masks like the way how the techiots came to help and some at least are so utterly destroyed they are to be the merosites the merosites of judges 5 where they did not even come and lord of a god said curse them bitterly that shall not be our fate because we have been bought with one access of great confidence in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit to be having in access with the great lord god the father in heaven we are having such a great privilege in the church age to have that great access for christ and yet there are many people who don't see that we have been taken in this great unique dispensation of the church age to be in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit and yet they are worried to look peace peace where there is no peace they look to swear by the temple of the lord of a god but they do not look where with they have to sacrifice themselves as a burning one in the altar and that's what the great problem that many men in the christendom are not able to recognize that they're following the same paths the way how manasa did the way how in fact indeed the joash bought the revolution yet his own son destroyed the same revolution in fact indeed we can find over here as well in the church age the pulpit should be for bible doctrine day by day but yet the people are loving to come back by joining their hands with the mass multitude of the people to witness for their glorious witness because they want to give miracles as a sign healings as a sign and they want to go back and tell in every mannerism of speaking in tongues and dear brethren and the people who believe those things do you know what the word says for us the great text when we read certainly should pierce our heart because how many days more and how much longer the people are interested to produce in them not the character of christ but they are interested in them to produce that which is lies forgetting that which has been made for them to become like the glory of christ they are yet not able to even meet the tamim standards of satan that's what we read in ezekiel 28:15 what a great shame it would be when the people of the church age in spite of given such great privileges are not able to even meet the minimum standards of tamim of satan before its fall but lord of god calls in you i shall form the character of christ in you i shall get many sons unto the glory of the lord of god and that's not possible dear brethren if you're not able to wake up at least to follow the example of Joshua far less you can look the new covenant that has been made with the israelites in jeremiah 31 33 where he very specifically says i shall write upon their hearts the hebrew word kathab is far more important than for the church age for us every believer every individual believer no longer any racial discrimination every believer is been given to look upon that great word of the lord of god in the fellowship of lord god the holy spirit and getting back to look his calling as he has been prayed in john 17 verses 4 through 9 and they have been told because they have to kept the word that's what the word says they have kept the word because they have got thy word through the rima declaration of the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher the greater the time you spend 
in the standards of unsettled minds of 1 Corinthians 14.33. They have made my Lord to be an author of confusion rather than looking upon my Lord as an author of peace. If it were not so, then they, would have, they wouldn't have allowed the woman to stand in a pulpit and preach over the having authority over the men. How many churches are not there today to make women as reverends and bishops and deaconesses and to have authority over the men? At least by that one sign you should understand that the mind of these people who are running those churches has been unsettled. They have made my Lord to be an author of confusion because their minds have been confused. Why? For the reason they have been confused, because they are trusting in the lying words. That's what Jeremiah 7 4 says. Jeremiah was charged by Lord of a God with a very difficult but necessary task. That's what we have to take today. Though the pulpits are not been teaching day by day, word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, in the from the original language of the scriptures through the work of proper isogagic categories and exegesis of great exposition of the word, what we have been preparing in the terms of Kazakh Archaeo Study Bible. That certainly edifies you to the maximum. For example, when you can go back and look, where there is no proper revolution of the word of the Lord of God, where the people will perish. The great things what we come back and conclude over there it teaches to us how important it is. It is not the visions that could be giving for you in the KJV translation. Or the way how the idiots, though they have some accuracy of the translation in my state of Andhra Pradesh, having the Telugu reference Bible, they don't want to go back and look. When the word says very clearly the divine oracles of the Lord. And yet they want to compare to the English and they want to say, see it says in visions over here and this is correct and we will talk to the people to say, you should have visions, you should have dreams, if not you will perish. What a stupidified talk after the completion of the canon of scripture, what we have in our hands. And there are millions of people following such counsel rather than believing the truth. So, what is our difficult task today? Go back and put once again in our pulpit the right foundation of the original language of the scriptures wherewith the male bona fide gifted spiritual pastor teacher to whom this bona fide gift has been given, he would lay down his soul rather than pleasing the committee. He would lay down his soul rather than pleasing his own soul to be filled with the filth of these old sin nature activities. And he would make them to understand the congregation of the Lord of our God, what it is. As per Psalms 22, verses 22 to 31, he would recount them in the midst of the congregation who they are. This is the assembly of the Lord of our God where the people have been filled with the sophers, the scribes. And the scribe is the rank of a prime minister in the sight of the Lord of our God. And not only just living the first time by eating the things pertaining to bread we have to go to slave the lion we have to go back and take from the hebrew greek and aramaic in the interlinea we have to take every word because strong meat now we are eating bones and flesh and he will be alert how to chew that bone because it will be very strong to crack it and what you do then to with the power of your teeth as much as power you have, what you do, you try to crack the bone. We are talking about the physical analogy. But the spiritual one, the mentoring minister of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to whom he has appointed the bona fide gift, and he should be a mentor ministering for you, for the pastor teacher. He would go back to explain to you in much of a detail. So that he will be completely satisfied. And he would come to repent the way when Peter said to those people, whom you crucified, Jehovah the Messiah, the result for them in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit preaching was that, what we shall do now? Repent, change your mind and be baptized, believe upon him. Today the people are not able to come to repentance because they have been flourished so much in their own old sin nature activities that they forgot even to take this difficult task of daily teaching Bible doctrine in their pulpits. And if they use the word doctrine again, they think something doctrine, nothing but daily Bible teaching, Bible teaching. Not a set of rules, what you have been ordained, what the Bible says, that's the only ultimate rule that we and you and I should walk. 
It is not our own home business we are talking about over here. It's the deal with the pertaining of Lord's glory we are talking and the flock belongs to the Lord and the flock should be trained for the work of the Lord, not for us. And that's the great problem in our pulpits today. They don't tell them to carry their yoke of wood and follow my Christ, taking their cross and looking upon the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith and running the race. And there's so much involved in the business tactics, dear brethren, at every sermon of the tape, in the radio networks, what we listen in the Americans. If you want to listen to this tape completely, if you want to listen to this audio tape completely or video tape completely, send us your gift. If they don't send the gift, then what? Let the people perish there. That's why though you have the keys, you're not able to enter or make others to enter and not making yourself also to enter into that kingdom because you're hindering their entrance. Graciously it has been granted for us, graciously you give it. Nothing of a great gain for you when you serve to the Lord of our God. The way how the Lord of our God will pay you back, you will be shocked. And that's what many people don't understand. Today let we may starve, but we have a great eternal weight of glory in the heaven, that's enough for us. Therefore how much we can crank it and give it out. So I should be much thankful to the Lord of our God for the technology that has been developed to have this YouTube where I can post in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, His words again to the entire world. It doesn't cost me anything apart from the package of data what I have to pay and whether these people are to download it, allowed to listen it, allowed to consider it or not my duty is to give and your duty is to take and receive it and that cannot come to you until and unless you come from Lord God the Father because the word of the Lord our God says for us until and unless Lord God the Father sends to you you cannot get this word so how you can please glad God the Father to know this truth? Bow down upon your knees to have a right and true fellowship with the Lord our God the Father because you have a difficult task, the task which our Lord our God endures through you, the task where He reigns in you, the task where He demands for us to perform because the good work which He has begun in us, it is He who is going to see its perfect completion. But only we should be the sanctified ready vessels for His work faithfully being prepared. And dear brethren, this great unique privilege, you know what a life it is we are going to look. It is not just that we go, to, we go to say to the unbelievers, you will go to hell if you don't believe in Christ. It should be the way that we should tell to them, dear brethren, this great glorious, peaceful, joy and happiest life that you could ever find after believing in Christ because the problem of sin and the problem of hell is been absolutely erased in the minds of every believer and the word says for them though who are unbelievers that should be very specific the human race the word says whosoever believes in Christ now they shall be saved and never be perished that means what though you are an unbeliever what are you doing in your religion terms you are looking for your peaceful life following these practices, following that practices. Once you come and look what is the practices of church age, therefore the word says, we believers should be prepared to show forth our light and salt to this world. We believers should be ready when anyone asks us, First Peter 3, what is the reason that you believe in Christ and you should be ready to answer to them why we are so happy though we don't have anything on this earth. Because we have eternal security in Christ. That's what we read in 1 John 5.20 just now. He is the true life eternal. By the holy manner walk of life that we walk through. People should come and ask. What is that life that you are enjoying? Why I am not having? Looking upon your deeds they should glorify Lord God the Father in heaven says the scripture. It is not just we propaganda ourselves, it is what our holy manner of life should triumph and should lead them to come to Christ. And that's the great privilege for us and how it is not possible if you are not able to eat strong meat and that by strong meat we mean you are able to discern spiritually what is right and what is wrong rather than trusting in the lying words of the so-called Christendom pastor teachers. 
the Christendom has to teach us the cults of unsettled minds. They also run their show and business, making common, that's what it really pierces our heart. If the priest in the Old Testament shall not be put upon the burial grounds of the common people, they have something separate. And if the priest has been put in the burial ground of the common people, that meant to say that priest was a common man. It's a great insult for him. Like the way Ahilothope went along to put his house in order when Absalom rejected his advice and the way how he hanged himself. Because priest has something great to say and we believing priest today in the church age. The great problem with us dear brethren in the so-called Christendom religion what they're doing is they have made to get in common terms in common places. They're comparing to the gods. That's what even you know the great thing which will certainly hurt us when you certainly look and read in first kings and second kings. And Nebuchadnezzar came along to appoint the kings over there in the land of Judah, Jerusalem. He changed their names and he kept the names that were feasible for that king. At least by that you should understand. If the real name which was been given by the Hebrew parents, they changed. And the king doesn't want to have the reproach of them and he wants to remove that name and he wants to keep something of, their, of his own name which is feasible for him, even the same thing what he did with the terms pertaining to Daniel or the things pertaining to Meshach, Shadrach, Abagnado. And today, whenever a believer, an unbeliever believing in Christ, and they want also want to change their name and they want to get back into the name of Christ. But the deeds are still the same old good ones. When an unbelieving king later went brought to his mind the wisdom of the Lord, into his senses after becoming an animal and eating the grass. He realized there is no other God, Lord, apart from this great Lord. And these two men, one Joash and the one Cyrus, and this one who has been appointed by the Lord of a God to do his will towards his people of Israelites. Even when he could keep before believing upon the Lord such kind of a great sanctity towards their gods, and in today's Christendom, you as a believer, following the same ritual standards of morality, following the same ritual standards of legality, and saying them, if you don't do good works, you will go to hell. That's what unbelievers or unbelieving religion minds teach us. But the word of the Lord of God says for us, your good deeds are just malicious clots. Because you have only one great righteous deed to be done, believing in Christ. Because He has bore our sin on the cross. And by that we mean the sin of not believing upon Him, where we don't have His righteousness being credited to our account. We may have holier than the attitude. That's what we are talking about. If the Babylon king can be some holier, he thought he is holier than the, than, the, than the things pertaining to Israel. And therefore he changed the, king, the name of those kings and he kept the other names and he appointed them to be their kings. He thought he is holier than others. Likewise, in the church age, we are able to find holier than the attitude, but we are not able to find the only holy one of Israel. The only holy one of my Lord, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Akkad. That's not only happening right in the past or in the present as well. In the past dispensation, people exchanged. In the way how the scripture records, he built even the grooves of Asherat in the house of the Lord my God. And the way have Antiochus Epiphanes will come again to offer their 1,000 sacrifices. First he started with the kids being born and their mothers. And when they were not equivalent to the number, he went along to slave the pigs. The way how the sanctuary of the Lord of God has been defiled, that should be for the glory of the Lord of God. When Uriah, when Uzziah, when he went along to take hold in the Philistine cart, when it was about to fall, the Ark of the Covenant. And in that day many people died, and the word was been recorded till date called as Perez Uzziah. Then when such sort of things were happening, yet our Lord of God was been gracious to provide the Ark of the Covenant. 
and at the time of Jeremiah, the Ark of the Covenant being removed. Dear brethren, we should look and understand the same things that are happening today in our pulpits. You are now the temple of the Lord of our God. Are you building your life in an altar way that could be an absolute sacrifice of a living one to Christ? Or are you building the way of this king's represented to build in the same house of the Lord of our God the altars and the burnt sacrifices of devils? We know daimonian idotes. That's what the word very specifically calls. Made out of gold, silver, wood, precious stones. Made out of the things pertaining to their own imaginary. If the way a Babylon king can change the name of this people and he want to appoint them to be there, in his own name of his own vernacular, then do you think we Christians on this earth traveling now in the present Christendom, we would say for them as well, you will go to hell, prove them what life of a redeemed deeds you have as Nietzsche could call. To believe upon your Redeemer, show me the redeemed deeds in your life. How much we are able to have the redeemed deeds. If you don't look upon Christ, if you don't put to death your necromancy, the old sin nature, you are still not being redeemed, though you may have a great Redeemer in your life. You're not making him to work in you. You're not making him to have the true fellowship in you. You're not making him to work in you to get the produce and to, and to have the character of Christ. For every little detail of sin in your life, you are losing out the fellowship of Lord God the Father in heaven, Lord God the Son in heaven, and Lord God the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. And what are you ending up? You are becoming to be more worse than those unbelieving men who are superior in morality than us. That's why you always compare the holier than the attitude. That's why you always tell to them, come to me so that I can cleanse your sickness. Come to me, I can cleanse your worries. The word of the Lord our God says, no one can give rest until and unless you come to my Christ. He is the only rest. He is the only true Lord of our God. He is the only true life. Your worries, your sufferings to carry your rock of wood and follow him every day. You know very well the way how he's going to cleanse out all mannerism of uncleanliness in your life. And every day he comes for examination whether you're still the same because he's an omniscient knowledge of God and the time that we're going through in this pilgrimage trip he is realizing, he is making us to realize yet he knows everything as the way how Peter said to the Lord, Lord you know it. When he was being asked, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, pie man, basco, pie man. Lord you know very well. That will be the reply of us when he's examining us because in his omniscient knowledge of the Lord our God, he knows very well what will be our fate. From now the next year, from now from the ten years of whichever time our Lord our God seemeth fit to keep the rapture or the things pertaining to his great glory which he says, the death, which is a promotion for us. He knows very well what it is. So what we can hide or what we can make our life as a show to say, Lord, you know the hearts of us. Show us the way how the Lord should fall upon them and upon whom it has to fall. And dear brethren, many people in the church age who have lost to take this burden of their task in their life every day, they have become to themselves oriented to this great life. And they are not able to come and carry the difficult task for which you have been kept alive on this earth. Therefore he says in Joshua 1.5, None of the man shall stand before thee all the days of your life. You may think, Satan may rise to mulch. When Satan itself has been destroyed, Satan worries even to touch you because we who are born of God, we sinneth not, says the word and we keep his commandments therefore satan can never touch you the problem is when you sin the problem is when you don't keep his commandments then certainly satan influences the people to come against you but the word of the lord of god says when satan has been destroyed in ezekiel 28 15 through 19 and says forever it shall never stand before thee it shall die a common death forever it will be like the way when you unsheath your swords because you are my alien ariats 
then how do you think satan can be in you or satan can influence you and satan can have to worry about you and the word says in romans 16 20 you can trample satan under your feet every breath if your last enemy is satan which can cause you to think that it is very difficult for you to carry this task on this earth then you are kidding yourself you know not what is the truth therefore the truth hasn't set you free even we are not worried about our death because you know what habakkuk 3:11 teaches to us the enlightenment like a thundering bowl should be our result by daily taking in and show forth the excellence of that light in us like a flaming torch and we shall pitch our tent and when we shall pitch our tent the sunlight and the moonlight will be vanishing off because the sunlight and the moonlight refers to the human reasonings on this earth because the world runs upon that sunlight and the moonlight therefore the reason we can find even in second kings the people worshiped even the sun gods in the night time they want to worship the moon gods and yet they want to say we are following the faithfulness of the lord of a god's word where it is doesn't he say for us in second kings destroying them from our thinking that's what i meant to say symbolically if the people are thinking let they will absorb the lying vanities let them go and absorb the lying vanities but why we should become a part of lying vanities by not providing them the true light in our lives to carry this task demands your complete sanctification dear brethren therefore your positional sanctification is been made at the moment of salvation to defend the holiness of the lord of our god in essence but your experiential sanctification from milk to bread from bread to meat demands day by day growth without having this day by day growth you cannot at least know your physical biological process of metabolism when you eat the food what happens in its catabolism and anabolism prior to that whenever you could swallow the thing apart from drinking the milk or water that's the babe even they drink Anything food you want to eat will you directly swallow it or you will chew it by cracking it down or crushing it down under your teeth This task demands cracking down the word of the Lord of a God Every word what it is is it so in the original Hebrew that is your growth to reach strong meat But you people don't even love to do that because you love to believe the lying words of this man And that's why the pulpits will go week by week rather than day by day. Though the word of the Lord of God calls in Proverbs 8, 34 through 36, day by day. As today, today, tomorrow. You people love to quote Hebrews 38, 13, 8, which says Jesus Christ of the Lord of God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But you will never understand the same principle being taught for us OM upon OM in the terms pertaining to Hebrews, in, uh, in the terms pertaining to Proverbs 8, 34. Because he is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, forever. And he demands for us to come for his Bible class day by day. As today, today, and tomorrow and those who come for his bible class day by day finding they will find the true life and that true life is so great because it is not we we are carrying the burden the joint partaker which is nothing but our partner of sunani lam one and i says pro says, says romans 8 it is he who is going to be a partaker with us a joint helper with us a joint guide with us Do you know what a great privilege it is to cherish and nourish there is nothing of a burden that you're going to take apart from sanctifying your flesh to the lord of a god and therefore we read in hebrews 10 10 oh lord i have come to do thy will the preparation of this flesh which i have kept for your work to be given as a burnt sacrifice unto thee and that's a very great word a bloodless a pure separated one and many people even when they debate they say jesus christ bled to death no a sacrifice to the lord of our god bloodless therefore when the soldier who has been there pierced he could found that's what john records for us in his gospel serum and blood clots he didn't bleed to death and many vague movies what we can look and the way how haima has been used the blood 
and many ways the people who think that he has shed his blood and the way how he shed his blood not to the point bleeding to death because of his wounds he was been bruised says Isaiah 53 and the double that's what we can look in Isaiah 53 that blood is enough he did not bleed to death neither the crucifragum which could break his bones was available to fulfill the scripture because he's not an animal to be cut and to be put to blood out he is the divine Lord of our God he is our role model and that he is Lord God in that in human he says be like me and follow like me imitators of God Ephesians 5 1 and for that cause a living sacrifice for us and if the region demands for you to be like a martyr to the Lord of our God do not hesitate our Lord of our God knows how to use us for martyrdom and how to train us for his discipleship or how to be like Apostle John till he waits to could come and teach the word it is his will at the 78 AD when he would become the destruction of the temple Lord of our God took back two years earlier Apostle Paul and from 70 to 96 AD the 26 years of gap and in the 26 years we find these precious epistles 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, the Gospel of John and the rings pertaining to the book of Revolution and in that he clearly mentions for us the ceremony and blood clots. so this flesh has been prepared for the Lord of our God to show forth the marks of him in our life as Christ being our role model, Christ being our Lord, Christ being our hero And whom we can have on this earth apart from such great Lord of our God who dealeth with us wisely in his wisdom and in his judgments righteously and demands every believer to wear upon his new clothes and to deal in accord with the great work of the Lord of our God being given to us this great task and demanding in our lives dear brethren whether you believe it or not as Psalms 24 verse 4 teaches to that the one who are of innocent and the one who are having innocent hands or palms and the one who are pure in heart and who haven't lifted up to the futility or the vanity the soul of me that's what dear brethren you should be understanding this great word soul of not you but me referring to Christ and in his passages he says it is he who should give us this life do the people love to run crazy in the legalism and they say abortion is not this because they're having life in it the soul should be given to you at the moment of your physical birth the nut shama which should hit for you your format soul and this soul of me and the people when they come back to this earth being not trained very well properly by their parents they think it is their own soul to have the human viewpoint if not Lord our God wouldn't have referred for the children who have been born until and as you have been in that nature of attitude like them you cannot see the kingdom of God neither enter because the kingdom of heaven belongs with such kind of a nature of this little children the point what I want to make clear to you dear brethren if we are being like kids we know very well it should be the soul of God the Father in heaven in us therefore the scripture says in Matthew 18 the angels of this little ones constantly look upon the face of the Father in heaven whether we meant to say what they don't have any evil apart from the roles in nature being passed down by the parents and if we train them up in the right path they will be led in the right path therefore here we find in Psalms 24 4 to stitch for us the palms should be of innocent one the heart should be of a pure one and the one who haven't lifted up to fidelity to idol worships that's what to be called as vanities upon vanities idol worships 
The same conclusion in one in one John five twenty one, where Apostle John writes, "Technon, my beloved children, be aware or be far away from these idols." And this is what vanity, futility is all about. And as many people don't understand, they think idol worship the way how in my country, India, they're having many idols. No, the idol worship refers to your own old sin nature, lustful patterns of your flesh. What you think you can safeguard in your mind that you are put in reality in a form of an image. For some, it is the sexual lust. For some, it is the approbation lust. For some, it is cupidity. And for some, in the mannerism of their gods, what they prefer to make the people to fear and say, this is the only true God, follow it. So here we find, little children, keep yourself from idols. And the word calls for us, flaxate, meant to say, God. And what that is, idols, idolon being made in your own brainchild imaginations because you can defend it. So here Sami says for us in Psalms 24 4 those who haven't lifted up their soul that's what the word says his soul but in the Hebrew it doesn't say that the one who not he lifted up to the futility the soul of me the originator is always God the Father therefore he demands your soul that's what he says let us make man in our own image the soul of me and we think we can have our own mentality we think we can have your own consciousness we think we can have your own volition and the one who sinneth against his own soul shall die several times he says but he calls for us to remember once again today or tomorrow again he will get back to the throne because they have been sent with a great purpose. Do you know, brethren, rather than taking a severe action upon those people who do not walk, even the court of law today, particularly if a wife and husband wants to take a mutual understanding of divorce, they don't give it so easily, the divorce to them. They know what they do. They prolong for six months. Again, they prolong for another six months. Because they think at least in the meantime they may come together and love to be one. Because the word says you shall not divide. But those who are practicing adultery, they are sinning against their own soul and they shall perish, says the scripture. But the one who guards his own victory, he will eat the fruit of it. And the one who follows the advice of the master will have the honor of him all the time wherever he goes. Likewise, our Lord of a God comes again tomorrow to teach. In every mannerism of the place, wherever he goes, he loves to teach. Because he loves to provide you grace. That's what Lamentations 3, verses 21 and following teaches to us. A very, very great and unique passage of all time. This is what I recall to my heart. Therefore, I have absolute confidence. And you know what the word says? The people of that time, when they would be faithful to the Lord of a God, they departed from the walk in the Lord of a God. And what they, though lamentations being written by Jeremiah, it refers for us today to learn that the chasad of Yahweh, they shall never come to end. And the compassions, rasam, they are not finished. If the code could give six months or one year of time rather than entering up into adultery or any other mannerism so that they could come back once again so they can live a life, then we have been married to Christ. How much of a lot of God will give not us time? Doesn't he say in the book of Isaiah, I haven't put the petition. Where is the letter of your divorce of your mother? Get back to me because the way how she has sinned and taking her own life in the idolatry realm. The same thing what we can luck like, and learn every day, dear brother, in our life for which we have been kept alive in this church age. Though his kindness faileth not, they will never come to an end. And his compassion, they aren't finished. They are every day, morning by morning, they are vast in faithfulness. 
because it is the soul of him that is given for us. We are not of our own, how we can become our own creation. Today the scientific world may think they can generate babies by trying to fertilize between the woman and the between the womb and the sperm. They can generalize the babies. Though they may achieve it till to the ninth month at the time of the physical birth. The divine justice of the Lord our God to impute Adam's original sin. If there is no imputation of that soul of the Lord our God to that, though they may form the zygote and the baby, it's not possible for them to look. Therefore, the very specific word, the soul of me, doesn't even when we read in the book of Daniel, the Lord of a God who is the Lord of all flesh, in whom he has given the soul of him. Don't have a thing. You have the power to generate that soul to your progeny. If it is not the will of Lord God the Father to have that soul, never you will realize. Since it is the soul of him, he says, to recollect in his mind. This is what we have to recollect to our heart. The kasad and the rasham of the Lord of a God faileth not. They are every day new and vast is his faithfulness. How much we can stand before that vast faithfulness of the Lord of a God today. Therefore he says in Psalms 24 4 let's learn the correction rather than spending our life to think it is our own soul. The KJV goes to say, Who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity? No, here it refers for us, Who not he lifted up to the futility soul of me, And not he swears to decide. Whose soul it is? The soul of Lord God the Father, Making us in his own image. And before the foundation of the world, he says for us, this church age kinecatesis to be far greater than the Old Testament saints, including the greatest ones like Moses. The church age believer in whom who has become the temple of the living Lord of a God is far more superior. Then how much more we should be when we are sharing his sonship, his heirship, his righteousness, his sanctification. If ever something is hindering, it is purely because of our believing not. Because we don't love to chew our food. Neither the pastors of so-called Christendom who come to the pulpits to work for their own belly, to make their belly to be their God for some pieces of bread up or some handful of barley, will not work out to give you this truth. And they would say, if ever they would give something of it, send us your precious gift, we will give for you. The series are there. Go back in the line, in the online and look for it. Hmm. Have it is they will get that word upon their tongue to ask like beggars. Is it not the Lord's will when he said for us in the case of first second Kings chapter seventeen? Of first Kings chapter seventeen to teach a lesson. With the crows when he sent meat and bread morning and evening. Can't he send you if you're faithful to his word? Do you know how great and marvelous will be his deeds? You cannot even imagine. Being a faithful steward of the Lord of our God, he will make us to lie down in green pastures and he knows how to feed us our food physically. Because he's going to provide for us spiritually every breath. And in order to take again the spiritual food tomorrow, our biological systems of this metabolism demands food and he knows how to send it for us. And doesn't he say in the book of Proverbs, the house of a wise man is of a costly store. There is no lack. And he guides us before he could provide for us. The way how we have to earn it. 
and he knows how to protect us. Like those men like Paul who said, And nothing I shall be ashamed when I appear in his presence, not even to be a burden upon you in the matter of my food. I paid rent with my own hand. He knows how to design according to the desires of your heart to give you what you demand. The little details of this life, exchanging for the glory of the Lord our God, your catering needs of your flesh, and tomorrow you'll find you couldn't stand in faith rather than begging them money to spend this doctrine. Dear brethren, the soul of him and therefore he says for us the soul of him can carry this task and we shall have a word of prayer and come back and look infinitely divine holy father as we're going to share these things we pray Lord God the Holy Spirit in Latin challenges by this message in Christ's name we pray father amen so this task which is so great for us he goes on to prove for us, Jeremiah was charged by the Lord our God with a very great difficulty but necessary task. He was told to stand at the entrance of the temple and preach repentance to the people of Israel in Jeremiah 7, 1, 2, 3. The Babylons were coming and impending judgment was looming over the city. Jeremiah also warned the people not to trust in lying words concerning the temple this is what today many people are thinking concerning the temple the true lord of a god they have seen only the one face of him gracious and loving they haven't seen the other face with him there is no respecter of persons he did not spare power he did not spare moses he did not spare his own son on the cross. How do you think you and I could be spared by having to look that we are the Trinity of the Lord of our God, we are the temple of Christ, and there is nothing that could happen to us? Hasn't he destroyed those people who did not walk in the terms of his truth? So if you don't walk according to the task of which has been kept us alive on this earth, do you not think he's going to destroy you? No matter how great you may be, no matter how great a sacrificial life of yours may be, his necessary task is to preach the truth as it is. If you have learned Christ from him, says Ephesians 4, let us learn in truth. As it has been taught for you by the word of the Lord of God, as it abides in the word, let's be there depending upon it. And therefore, he says for us, though the people of the time in the Ascological background, Jeremiah warned the people not to trust in the lying words concerning the temple. And that's what he did not spare his own son on the cross because of you and me, the sin. Because he hated the sin and he let go his son for three hours. And how much more it should be for you and for me. Though we are the temple of the Lord of our God. And do you think if you don't learn his warning discipline, if you don't heed his intensified stage of discipline, then he will keep you alive on this earth is going to force you out sin unto death because the name what you have you are blaspheming it the name for which you have been bought with a great price you haven't known the value of it the law and the people of the lord of a god that's what he says in jeremiah 31 33 they shall be my people and they and i will be their god provided when i engrave upon them this great new covenant writing down the entire law of the lord of a god he did not spare them to call us his people when we are having to be his people and if you don't walk according to his terms he will not spare us either therefore the same thing he writes for us in second corinthians 6 do not be equally yoked with unbelievers get out and be free look upon the promises of the lord our god be cleansed and he writes the same thing again being engraved upon your hearts Many people think it's a tough task to write the Bible. If you love my Lord, you will have fun in writing that. When you're writing that, as our Lord our God would say, I have seen the tears of Ezekiel. So, when you go back and look the things which haven't been taught for you accurately in the original languages of the scriptures, 
at the cost of your life what they're squeezing from you and the way how the people are perishing without knowing these things though the physical tears may not come out from your eyes lord our god looks upon that and he gives you greater knowledge and wisdom to grow up and to carry this task because it is he who is with us and the one who is with us is greater than the one who is in this world because we have the soul of him that's why he made us in his own image therefore dear brethren we should look the word kathat it's nothing but to grave to write describe to give a detailed account to inscribe to to grave or to carve on it as a permanent record to prescribe the authoritative rule which is should be written and to be carried out that's it there is no other excuse and subscribe and having an expressing agreement with Adonai Elohenu to write and to complete his entire word day by day. And that's why he says, you shall be my people provided you write it, provided you learn it, provided you execute it. But can we say we are the children of the Lord of our God apart from your lips? Can your hearts judge not? The greater you sin, the greater you keep not his commandments. When he says in John 14, 15 and 15, 14 as well, you will be my friends when you keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Have you at least known what are the commandments? Have you at least learned what are the mandates? Like Joshua, if you are not strong and courageous in the will of the Lord God the Father, till you could finish your work, there will be no one who could stand before thee. Even the same thing he says in Deuteronomy 17.24. Or 7.24, sorry. Till you utterly destroy your enemy, there will be no one who could stand before you. By that we mean to say what? Till you could kneel down and read the Bible, till you can kneel down and write the Bible for the first time, slivering the beer, till you can kneel down and write the second time, slivering the lion in the Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic of its interlinear translations. And the third time, till you can slip down like Goliath, the way how the word of the Lord of God calls. And if Saul could ask hundred foreskins of the Philistines, then what a demand it will be for us, like David, to get two hundred Philistine foreskins. And we have to slip down to write not just twenty-two times for the every alphabet of the Hebrew, but we have to go to write forty-four times. And if the grace of the Lord of God needs, let us write more many times as well as he intends in our life, every word. Because we have to show forth the ivory task of his great work on this earth. In Ezekiel 27 we read, and in fact indeed, if we read the lives of some of the kings, though they were of Christ, they were been of Jerusalem, they were of the Lord Yahweh Elohim, they constructed ivory tasks of temples, the grooves, the images. Let our knees talk about it. When we have constructed kneeling down and reading first time the Bible, when we have erected slipping down the beer by kneeling down and writing the Bible, when we have taken the second time to slip the lion and be qualified to be his people, a recognized seal of a mark, what Ezekiel 9 tells. Wait till the people who are mine could be sealed so that you shall not destroy them. So where is your mark of your seal? A nominal Christians where they would come and say, Lord, we have done this thing in your name, we have done that thing in your name, we have been preaching in your name. But if it doesn't do the will of Lord God the Father, the Thelema will which he quotes for us to give our life as a living sacrifice to Christ. He says, I know not who you are. Workers of iniquity, get out. Many nominal Christians, conventional Christians, they are also inexcusable. Do you know why? They have been given the free will to kneel down then and there itself and ask Lord God the Father to show in the right path, in the leading of right word, so that they could realize how diplomatic they have to be in this earth by becoming like Christ. 
and what a great burden they have to become like Christ. That's what we were telling for you. We have the adoption of sons. And then we have being born of Christ, knowing true eternal life in us, to represent by carrying his task of burden laid on upon our shoulders. What we have and what we enjoy, the world doesn't have, dear brethren, no matter whatever you may think. We are not of the world because the entire world lieth in wickedness. And for every believer, Satan is waiting to test us the way how Mark 1 13 tells for us when Christ was led or driven into the wilderness of his isolation place. Satan comes to test him, to prove that he should be unapproved, he's not worth. That's what every believer has been taken. To prove that we are unworth, we are unapproved. But in the grace of the Lord our God, he says in Ephesians 1, 4 through 6, in comparison to John 1, 12, that we have been born before the foundation of the world for his work, and we have been born according to the will of Lord God the Father. Therefore, we who are his, they will keep his word, and they sinneth not against the Lord our God. Not just think sin in the terms of your physical lusts, the sin is that to carry his yoke, which you neglect to do, by becoming his disciple, by carrying his cross. That's a sin for the believer and for the pastor teacher. The sin is to not train them up in the terms of Colossians 1, 23 to 29. Not making every believer perfect and complete in the thorough epinosis knowledge of his will. Making them to be mature and complete. And if you don't do that, that's a sin being accounted for your credit. Therefore, not many men become the preachers of the word of the Lord of God, says James 3, because you have a very, very tough judgment. You have double honor, at the same time you have double punishment. Therefore, many tears who have entered into the ministry today, ranging from Kleptes to Sheruras, who have become the entertaining clowns, have, make, have made the people to trust, to say, every mannerism of the esagogical background of Jeremiah 7, the temple of the Lord. And they said, God would not never destroy the city that contained his temple. And in effect, they were always saying, trust in the temple, not in Jeremiah's word. Today as well, the people are loving to trust the gimmicks of the so-called great pastors who say we are having multiples of people coming to us rather than what the word of the Lord of our God says, the infallible and inerrant one making discipleships every breath. Jeremiah then turned to an historical precedent to show the temple what has happened during the time of Samuel, the way how Shiloh was being destroyed. Yet the people don't learn. We have a great example of the past dispensation believers who haven't gone through the Lamath process of Deuteronomy 4 to make them disciples, Manthano plus Didasco. That made them to rise a generation where they knew not Jehovah. And they wanted to make up a king because in those days there was not a king who could make them to walk. And whatever there was right in their own eyes, they went along to dead. But when we find after King David, the way how they did evil in the sight of the Lord our God, including King David as well, except in the case of Uriah the Hittite, records the Bible. When we come, I can conclude the evil of these kings departing totally out from the hand of the Lord our God, except Joash who repented being a tender heart, says the scripture. Renting his clothes, putting, dust, putting ashes upon his head, and making them to come back once again the feast, the way how it has to be. Never they have been kept like that, he says. But where did they end up? Again into the same slavery. The last messenger, Malachi, who comes and tells. In the Spirit of the Lord our God, again, there's going to open up a ministry through Elisha. That's what John the Baptist, a voice in the wilderness. 
and hence the word to say curse. Because of one failure not to make up to be the Lama students, they were destroyed. Therefore, the same thing he tells during the time of Samuel, dear brethren, to show how completely wrong in today's Christendom the people are walking by not growing up in grace and in the knowledge of Bible doctrine, to tell that the work of the temple will presence will certainly spare them from disaster. Therefore, in comparison to Jeremiah 7 12, go now to my place which was in Shiloha, where I set my name at the first, and see what I did to it because of the wickedness of this people Israel. And he uses the word, my people Israel. God had destroyed Shiloha in the days of Samuel. Even though the tabernacle was there and God had set his name there, says 1 Samuel 4 12 22. Then existed morally corrupted and idolatrous Israelites had even used the Ark of the Covenant as a sort of talism or good luck charm against these Philistines to no avail. Psalm 78, 58 through 16, 1 Samuel 4, 4 through 5. Similarly, in Jeremiah's day, they worshipped the Kuhn of heaven and offered the children to demands, Jeremiah 7, 18 and 31. Yet they claimed protection because they were the keepers of God's house. This is a great problem that is happening giving your life to the lustful patterns of the walls in nature and saying, yet we are the children of God. Yet because of his vast faithfulness and his compassions fail not, he comes morning by morning to teach to you the truth, to teach to you the word of the Lord our God. Yet you say, no, you don't want to expose yourself in the attributes of his light. But he lacketh not. He provides for you daily this doctrine. Yet they say they were the keepers of the God's house. The Ark of the Covenant did not save them in the past and the temple would not save them now. Those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And that's what we are able to find in our pulpits today. The failure of Lama in Deuteronomy 4 when the priests were been trained to tell them to train and make them disciples. The same thing has been repeating today in our pulpits. No discipleship program at all. They think they're running churches. They think they're making great men. But they aren't making them to be the disciples of Lord's glory. For which they have been kept alive and the power and the authority given for us in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And what a great shame it will be for us when we stand in his presence not doing his work and say, yet we are readily available. Lord, use us. For what he should use you. You are using his name in disguise to earn for your own wealth and making a lot of worms for you to be when you go back to grave to enjoy. Dear brethren, it is a well-known but true saying for us. Jerusalem would fall just as she loaded. Then what about the church age today in our own day? If it does not if we trust in our own Christian forms, heritage, or doctrines, yet think Lord God will ignore our worldliness and unjudged sins, then we confess not. Do we not in effect trust in the lying words of the so-called charismatic and prosperity gospels, rather than being prepared to be the vessel of true sanctification to the Lord's work forever? The greater you think, you can keep still sin in you and you can be used by the Lord of a God. Just forget about that thought. You need to judge yourselves. Therefore, we use the privacy of priesthood, rebound. Today or tomorrow, you, the better, the, the sooner, the better it is for you to wake up and come to reality. To carry this yoke of wood every day, daily carrying your cross. And becoming like Christ and to understand him. And to stand like the way how we promised Joshua, to be courageous all the time, so that our walk should be always prosperous in the knowledge of his word, because he's called for us such great victory. And our walk should be always proceeded intelligently. Therefore, dear brethren, that's not possible if you depart from the mouth, from thy mouth, the word of the Lord of our God, and neither meditate upon it day and night. And if you're not observing to do what it has been written therein, then it's not possible for it to prosper. 
to become a great prosperous one, you should not withdraw from his word, neither to the left or to the right. You should always love to absorb to do that which has been instructed for us in the doctrine. And you should be always readily available to do, day and night, having the scriptures to read and meditate upon it. And by the bona fide gifted pastor teachers who teach to you this great word day by day. And learn the truth so that the truth can set you free. Therefore, dear brethren, remember Lamentations 3, 21 to 27. What a great privilege it is while we are in youth to carry this yoke. Not while you are in youth to get married and to have children, but while you are in youth carry this yoke. And while the way your kids will, your parents will train you up in the, in the work of this great work. Because if they have been very well fear of the word of the Lord of God to understand, the kids are on heritage of the Lord. And he gives them so that you could truly understand the real purpose of godly seed on this earth. And if you cannot be there, and if you have been interested to become once again into the worldliness, cosmos, diabolicus thinking, and for your unjudged sins you will be preserved and protected, then remember, the hand of the Lord of a God is very great wrath upon them who dishonor his word. If not now, at the judgment seat of Christ, you may live a wicked life, remember, the way how Manasa did and it affected the children. And if you have been found faithful in the sight of the Lord of our God, though your parents are wicked, yet you will be living a life like Joash, his son, establishing once again the word of the Lord of our God. We have been called to be the kings and priests in the church age. Think over these issues because the privacy of our priesthood, the confession of our sins, and the work of our kingship to slip the beer, to slip the lion, and to slip the Goliath, and to be available for his work. Let's be prepared, because our Lord our God uses only those men who are faithfully prepared. Faithfully prepared in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and to constantly use the great work for which you and I have been kept alive in this world. Dear brethren, think about these issues as we shall come back and continue maybe after two days as I'm going to search some of the lexicons of Hebrew in a place and I'll be coming back tomorrow also I will record but not in the same place so dear brethren think about these issues as we shall come back and continue in the same fellowship of light God the Holy Spirit after two or three days with our head bowed and eyes closed the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ without hope and without eternal life in order of returning to Lord God the Father, that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my Saviour. That is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for you is so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the greatest mind is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine, wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess to know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor teachers, the greatest mind is to carry so thorn lagam. Herald the word in season and out of season, because of the diamond of my witnesses, wherewith you have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in whirling trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. A number two diamond from my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, and not worry besides nature, the entire angelic host will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, no matter however the chips may fall. This great privilege to be called His people, wherewith He has entrusted us, as to become his adult sons after becoming Technam and demanding us not to sin but to keep his word all the time is a great life for us in the church age so that in the due process of Kerusathon Lagan we could always come back and look and understand this great ministry of which you and I have been called and prayed for us as John 17 18 and 9 says dear brethren what a great prayer it is to understand they have got the word and I pray for them I pray not for the world but for them which you have given me for they are thine what a privilege it is for us to be blessed with such a great blessing prayer for us and yet if we say Lord our God will not curse us when we are those sinning and living in the worldly life remember Siloha Remember the history wherewith you haven't learned in the case of Jerusalem time and Jeremiah said. 
he did not spare his own son on the cross, then how much more it should be for you and for me when we go back home. And if you go back home by sin unto death, what a great shame it would be, rather than seeking to understand. When our Lord prayed for us, the Rimata declarations which you have given to me, I have given to them. And they took it, and they got it. By that we mean what? The remnant of the Lord of our God which has kept for us in the church age as well. Those who walk by conquering the Bible are always there. In the past they were, in the present they are, even in the future they will be because though the church age may end up in apostasy, they will be the people who have got his word forever being hid in their heart so that they might not sin against this great eunuch. Lord of a God who is the Lord of all flesh and in all the flesh he has his soul and the people till they could come to their God consciousness to believe in my Christ they grieve and squelch and they sin but when they, they, they blasphemy they will not grieve and squelch and sin but though after believing in Christ yet if they blasphemy then what a yet if they grieve and squelch and deceive the mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit what a great sin it would be a sin where we shall be ashamed to look upon them when we go back home. But dear brethren, think that we have this great privilege not to sin against him. We have this great word not to go against him, but to be for him all the time, but to learn for him all the time, and to be ready, available to say, Lord, here I am, send me. Lord, here I am. Do Let me do the work. Tomorrow when I come back home, with what face I have to come. Tomorrow when I come back home, I have to only relax there. I don't have time now to relax on this earth, oh Lord. Let me fight the Lord's battle for which you have been kept us alive. And that's the prayer should be for every believer. Because you have been called to be an ambassador. You have been called to be a greater apologist than the way have the people think they are apologists. By defending the doctrine of the faith of the word of the Lord of God. And waking up to understand the people to whom this word has been given. If the word is not been taught for them, there the people will perish. Let them come to know thy truth, O Lord, that should not prayer be, so that they should not perish. Because we all are having equal privilege and equal opportunity, and they are our brothers and sisters in Christ, because we are one royal family, being baptized by Lord God the Holy Spirit into the baptism of Christ to do his commission on this earth. So why do you want to expect the great curse upon the fellow brethren? Even they are also of us. They would only love to plead on their cows to come to Christ and to forego the evil that they are practicing in their minds and learn Christ. Dear brethren, think over these issues as we shall come back and continue as our Lord our God leads us. Infinitely divine Holy Father, what a great privilege it is for us to have fellowship through the word. And what a great work you have given for us, O Lord. The soul of you in us. Father, help us to be faithful for it. Help us to change the facets of our soul from a memory point to divine point, because it is you who are the work of it, O Lord, not the work of this earth. So, Father, as we always ask for you, O Lord, the Tamim nature of Satan is nothing before even the old sin nature of our soul, what we have. Yet, O Lord, you have given for us this soul to overcome and to prove that we are far greater than the Tamim nature of Satan because you have prayed for us and you have given us to victory till we could reach and utterly destroy them by the point of which no one can stand against us because when God be for us who could be against us says the scripture so father help us to enlighten them help us to lead us in thy word help us to tell them what is the truth with great authority in Christ matchless peerless gracious name we pray father my Lord God the Holy Spirit enlighten them who are really interested to know thy will and to do thy will in Christ's name we pray sovereign Lord